the Avon Vale hunt. Illegal fox hunting still happening 20 years after it was banned. Another unknown hunt again, throwing a live fox to be torn apart by hounds. But tonight, pressing national questions about the policing of fox hunts. The Warwickshire hunt. Our hounds all over the road, causing absolute chaos. A hound almost collides with a passing car. An ambulance with emergency lights held up. And how dangerous is this? Horses and hounds stop traffic on a busy road. Your hounds are in the road. This is a main road. All evidence shared with Channel 4 News by the West Midland Hunt Saboteurs. So we're going to go up the front, the front track. They monitor the Warwickshire Hunt, one of the oldest in the country. Morning. How are you? Fine. Morning. Good. Who gathered recently with over a hundred horses. Morning. In recent years, complaints and video evidence of traffic incidents piled up. And that led to a breakthrough policing moment. Warwickshire Police served a community protection notice, a CPN, on the hunt in December 2022. Now that CPN forced the hunt to notify the police exactly when and where they'd cross main roads. And breaching the conditions will amount to a criminal offence. The hunt, though, appealed the CPN. But as the court case approached, something remarkable happened. The court case disappeared. It just evaporated and that is because a secret protocol was agreed between the hunt and senior officers of Warwickshire Police and from that day until this nobody has been allowed to know exactly what's in that deal. Tonight we shed new light on the conduct of Warwickshire Police. Denise Taylor liaises between the police and hunt saboteurs. So how did she find out about the secret deal back in August? I was alerted to that fact by somebody in, in our networks and they said, have you seen the Telegraph article, the CPN's been withdrawn, this was on the Sunday. I immediately emailed the rural crime team. Monday morning I got an email saying, we know nothing about it, we know nothing about this. Warwickshire Police did not dispute that detail but said the rural crime team was kept informed around the publication of the secret protocol. When Denise asked the Chief Inspector, he said there was nothing to worry about. I was told by um, Chief Inspector Steve Davis in an email that the private arrangement was actually far more wide-reaching than the CPN, which clearly it isn't. But the private deal isn't even legally binding. The CPN was. The private deal doesn't force the hunt to say where and when it'll cross main roads. The CPN did which may explain why scenes like these continue after the police secret deal. They've been assessed by the rural crime team as of high impact on the community. But their superiors in the police have overruled further investigation. Furthermore, tonight we can reveal this police email stating that the entire rural crime team, responsible for investigating the hunt, has been sidelined. Dated February the 9th this year, it states, I have been advised that the rural crime team will no longer be the central point for all matters relating to issues with the hunt. The police deny this, saying the team remains the central point for all hunt issues. So normally they come running down here. It all leaves local people like Caroline Hart feeling abandoned when the hunt comes on their land. We have pets that roam and run around. And um, if they got caught up in those hands, that would be a disaster. Um, we also have um, fox holes down there. We have badger sets down there on our land. And I do worry about that as well. And it's cruel. Um, it's also breaking the law. All of this means local MP Matt Weston has been inundated with complaints from constituents. Across Warwickshire, there's hundreds of people. Hundreds mm. have, have either really through social media who've been in touch and shown support and real anger about what they see uh, taking place. How does a deal like this behind closed doors sit with issues like accountability for a police force? This is really dangerous precedent, I think, uh, for the way policing is done uh, across all communities. What we have is some sort of arrangement 
special arrangement that's been made and agreed to by two parties, including the police, that cannot be in the best interests of the public and it cannot be in the best interests of law and order. He's raised this as a national policing issue with the Home Secretary, with the Environment Department, the Chief Constable and the elected Police and Crime Commissioner. He says he's got nowhere. But the Hunt Joint Master, Lizzie Sindon, did agree to talk to us. It's not a private deal, it's a settlement out of court and is everything in life um, subject to being in the public scrutiny? I don't think it is, is it? With policing? With due and with process? Policing and also the impact, the protocol is between us and the police, not between us and the members of the general public, surely. But shouldn't the public have the right to know? I don't think they, they don't, why do they need to know? you feel you are genuinely accountable even though it's a secret deal yes the wider concern for policing nationally is simply this that in pursuing this secret private agreement the police have abandoned due process the law courts and so forth we put that to warwickshire police and they came back to us with a statement saying well not saying anything about that they merely said they would continue to pursue criminal cases through the courts Warwickshire Police Chief Constable Debbie Teds refused to be interviewed. The Hunt insists accusations of antisocial behaviour are way overblown and the deal works. Who says it's not working? We all base our feedback on work from Warwickshire Police, not on that of a couple of individuals on social media with their own agenda. So at the end of the day, we are accountable to Warwickshire Police. We're not free of pro being prosecuted or being issued with another CPN. The hunting world is watching closely. CPNs force hunts to notify police about their route. No problem if you're legally trail hunting following a pre-laid scent. Recording start. Big problem if you intend chasing a fox. They're killing! Leave it! Incredibly, even under current scrutiny, Warwickshire Hunt has still killed at least one fox. This was in October. An apparent crime after the secret protocol was signed. Leave the body! Leave it, I'll have it. Yes, I will. And it's currently under police investigation. As I've said, if, any, if the evidence is credible, we'll fully cooperate with the police. The protocol has not put us above the law. As this year's hunting season draws to a close, the days of cosy backroom police deals to keep you out of court may be numbered. Labour is promising a ban on fox hunting that would actually ban fox hunting. Alex Thompson reporting. Well, the Chief Superintendent Matthew Longman from Devon and Cornwall Police is the lead on fox hunting crime for the National Police Chiefs Council and joins us now. Uh, from the outside, it looks pretty extraordinary. As the police lead on fox hunting, what do you make of a secret protocol, a secret deal being used in this type of policing? Well, I think what this story uh, demonstrates uh, once again is that this is a much bigger issue than just the killing of foxes. Uh, this is not a small group of people who are protecting animal rights, but rather large swathes of communities who are facing uh, intimidation, criminal damage, pets being destroyed, all of these things we've seen and more. Uh, and so we need to be far reaching our policing response and answer their cries to be uh, kept safe in their communities. I mean, which is why it's all the more extraordinary, isn't it? This idea of a secret protocol or a secret deal to avoid uh, this community order to avoid court. Well, as a national lead, what I need to do is coordinate 43 forces, all of whom operate independently. Uh, and so we, what we want to see is that uh, operational officers who are having the courage to step into this area, ensuring that they've got the, the backing of police leadership. And I think it really is going to test the backbone of senior leadership as we take this forward. It needs far more scrutiny at the highest level. Exactly as you say, this is not really about whether you have a view on fox hunting or not. It is about, in this case, antisocial behaviour, a hunt interrupting traffic, trespassing. Yet this secret protocol, as we understand it, and of course we haven't seen it either, um, is, is not enforceable in the criminal courts. The hunt doesn't have to inform police when and which roads it might be using. Can you see why police might think this is just giving a particular group carte blanche to do what they like? 
Well, I think it's a public perception that a, a relatively small group of people, uh, well-connected people, in some instances, have enjoyed uh, some privileges, uh, not having rules applied to them that might otherwise be applied to other people. Uh, if this was a group of young people on motorbikes causing that level of damage and uh, pet destruction, etc., we wouldn't be having this conversation. So that is a public perception, one we need to take very seriously uh, in a time when we're seeing reducing confidence in police. And these must be, of course, taken into account that some of these are our most isolated rural communities who are calling out in big numbers for us to support them. So, so what, what can and should be done about it? Because as I understand it, you've asked for details of this protocol. The MP has certainly asked for detail. National crime groups have asked for detail. And nobody's getting any information. How can that be right? What happens now? Well, nationally, we've set up a, another group of senior leaders now. We already had an operational group that 43 forces, so obviously affected to different degrees, can come together and share this learning. Uh, Warwickshire will deal with its own instance itself, but as a lead, I need to make sure we take the learning out of it. Uh, everything I will be doing uh, under the four values that underpin all of policing, one of which is transparency. So I just think it's really important that I, I continue to work and pull those together. I would say I've got a considerable amount of work still to do. Well... Indeed, on exactly that point, if you, as the lead on fox hunting, the police lead on fox hunting, aren't allowed to find out what's in this protocol, there is a great deal of work to, to be done. It's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? Yes, it is. And of course, we're not talking about the Hunting Act here. We're talking about antisocial behaviour legislation, again, indicating that the Hunting Act's not working for us. So I say I think this needs a conversation at the highest level. Uh, I think it is going to take some significant courage to change what is a mindset and apply the same level of rules as is applied to the rest of the country to this topic. Uh, and we will work and continue to do training to use the laws that we have to the best of our ability. But right now, clearly, they're not working for us. And that in itself is a topic that needs some consideration thought, I think. Yes, yeah, so, so on, on that point, how do you think the laws need to change to avoid this happening again? Well, I, I think they need an urgent review, and I've said that many times, uh, looking back on 20 years. And, of course, the advent of technology, social media, drones, is really helping us achieve this. It has lifted the lid on what is fast becoming uh, possibly one of the most farcical eras in criminal justice history because hunts are still offending. Uh, we are seeing it regularly. You've just covered one of those in your report. So the act cannot be working. Trail hunting cannot be working if uh, hounds are, are, are down busy roads and in front of ambulances. And therefore, the true way to do this is that the Hunting Act is going to need reform uh, and to close some of these loopholes that are continually being exploited and putting police in a very difficult position as we try to rebuild trust and confidence with our communities. Chief Superintendent, thank you so much for talking to us.